Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Parr, and on this episode of Math Up to Parr, we are going to be using some strategies to help us create a multiplication chart. A multiplication chart can be very useful for several different things. One of them for your multiplication facts, but also for your division facts. You can also use it as a way to find equivalent fractions, or you can use it to look at multiples when you're looking for your least common multiple. So there's a few different uses for it, um, and there are some steps that we can follow um, by using some skip counting strategies and a few other things to help us fill in a multiplication chart from scratch. So if you have a blank sheet of grid paper and it goes 12 across and 12 down, then you have enough squares to make your own multiplication chart. The very first step I'm gonna do is fill in my ones facts, my twos, then my fives, then my tens, then my elevens. The reason I'm gonna do those first is because those numbers are numbers that I have learned how to skip count by. I know how to count by ones, I can skip count by twos, by fives, by tens, and by 11s. So let's go ahead and fill in those right now. So I'm gonna start with my ones, so that means I'm just counting by ones straight across, okay? And the rule of a multiplication chart is whatever you fill in going across, you fill in the same pattern also going down. Okay, so now we're gonna do our twos. We're gonna skip count by two. So we have two, then four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. So now I'm going to go down this column. So I already have two and four done. Next comes six. And so now this column counts by twos and it matches this row that counts by twos. So my next step is to do my fives. I know it can be tempting sometimes to want to continue going in order, doing your threes and your fours, but if you follow the steps I've laid out, you'll be able to fill in a lot of your multiplication chart using skip counting facts you may be familiar with. If you know how to skip count by your threes and your fours, then that's great. So you may choose to do those next, but let's see what it looks like once we work with our fives. So I know how to skip count by five. So here's my row for five. So I count five, 10, then 15, 20, 20, 25. And I'm gonna go all the way across. So now I've listed all of my skip counting for um, my fives all the way across. So these are my, my multiples of five. So now I'm going to repeat the same pattern going down on my column of five. So this column is going to match this row. So now you can see I filled in my multiplication chart so far just with my ones, my twos, and my fives. So now I'm gonna go to my tens next. So here's my row of tens. So I have 10, 20, then I'm gonna skip count by tens and list out all of my multiples across the row. Now that I have my tens listed across the row, I'm going to repeat that and I'm gonna list out all my tens going down this column. So now I have my tens going down the column, which means I filled in my multiplication so far with just my ones, twos, fives, and tens. So I already have a lot of my multiplication chart filled out by using these strategies. Next up, I'm gonna skip count by 11s. You'll notice the pattern with 11s is that they double. Okay, whatever you're multiplying 11 by, that, uh, that other digit, you just double it. You put it in the tens place and the ones place. So I have 11 then 22, then 33, 44, 55, 66, 77, 88, 99. Then I get over here to 110. I'm gonna go ahead and stop, and I'm, I'm gonna wait to fill in these four boxes till the very end, so we'll come back to these. So once I fill in my 11s going this way, you know the drill, I'm gonna fill in them going down on my column. All right, wow, I have so much of my multiplication chart filled out. So let's go back to my list and see what we need to do next. So we've done our ones, twos, fives, tens, and eleven. The next is to use your nine strategy to fill in the nines. There's a few different strategies to help us remember our multiples of nine. You might know the finger trick. 
Um, and if you do, that's great. I'm not here to show you the finger trick today, but I am going to show you another strategy um, that I like to use to help me with my mind. So if you've got a spreadsheet of paper nearby, we're going to go ahead and we're going to make a list, okay? And so on that list, we're going to go down and we're going to count zero, then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, and then we're going to go um, backwards. So we're going to go from now we're going to go up our row and we're going to count from zero to nine going up. So I have a zero here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This actually lists out my multiples of nine because nine times one is nine. Nine times two is 18. Nine times three is 27. Nine times four is 36 and so on, all the way to nine times 10. You'll also notice that the two digits in the numbers add up to the number nine. So nine plus zero is nine, eight plus one is nine, seven plus two is nine. So that kind of gives you a hint as to what it's going to be. So. Um, since this is going vertical, I usually like to fill out my nines going vertical first. You'll notice that this is zero nine. You know that that's just the same as nine because the zero in the tens place is just a placeholder. So I have nine, then 18. Then I'm just following this chart over here. So then I go 27, then 36, then I have 45, then 54, then 63, then 70, two, then 81. And I'm going to stop there because I have my 90 and 99 right here. So now I'm going to do the same thing going across. All right, so now I've got my nines filled out going down my column and across my row. So let's see what's next. I'm on step three, it says fill in the threes. So if you don't know how to skip count by threes, if you don't have that memorized yet, I recommend you doing so. But if not, we can use a simple strategy of a triangle to help us count. Let me show you. So if you have a sheet of paper where you're writing your multiplication chart, to the side you can write a triangle. You can draw a triangle, okay? And a triangle has three points. So that helps me to skip count by threes. So if I were starting at three, I would start at the top of the triangle, okay? So I'd count by ones for each point. So I have three, then four, then five, six. Six is the next number. So then I'd have six right here, then seven, then eight, then nine. So nine would be my top number. So whatever you end up on the top, that's your ne next number in the sequence because that shows me three more, okay? Or you can count on your fingers. So you have nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay, that would be your next number, okay? I use songs to help me remember my threes skip counting, okay? Um, 24, and then I already have 27, 30, and 33 filled in. Um, to do my 12s, I just add three more. So 33 plus three more would be 36. And just because I do this, um, this row across, I also need to make sure I go ahead and do it going down my column. All right, so I've done my threes. Next up is I'm going to use my fours and I'm going to use my rectangle with dots to help me count. Dots just are what I normally use to mark the corners of my rectangle. So just like with fours, you're going to pick a point. So if I have four right here and then I count five, six, seven, eight, your starting point right there, that shows you four more. So after four, I go to eight. Then after eight, I have nine, 10, 11, 12. After 12, I have 13, 14, 15, 16. You can also count on your fingers. You'll start to notice a lot of your row is already getting filled up because we filled in our other numbers, okay? So I'm gonna continue counting by fours across this way. So 20 plus four more is 24, then 28, then 32. I already have these filled in. So I'm gonna add four more to my last number, which is 48. Then I'm going to go down. I'm going to do the same thing going down. And I also use a um, song to help me remember my fours. There are a lot of good skip counting songs out there um, that can help you memorize these to make these even simpler. Wow, guys, look, our multiplication chart is getting filled in by so much. We haven't even had to do some of our hard numbers like 
Sometimes the sixes and the sevens and the eights can be hard, but look, we already have the first five multiples in the sequence and then some more down here. So let's see. After the fours, we're going to go through and we're going to fill in our sixes. So if you don't have your sixes memorized, we're going to take that rectangle that we just drew and we're going to take it and we're going to draw a line through. So I've taken that same rectangle and I've drawn a line through it. So now I can count by sixes because I have... If I start with six, if I count six more, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. When I'm back to this starting point, that shows me six more because there's six more points. You can always add six more on your fingers. I also use a song to help me remember my sixes, um, but you can go ahead and use that to fill it in. So I'm going to count three more from, uh, not three more, six more from 30. So I get 36. Then six more, which is 42. Six more for that is 48. And then all the way over here, 66 plus six more is going to be 72. Now, that wasn't that many that I had to do my sixes for. I only had to do it for four numbers. And then I know it's the same thing going down. So that's why um, when you fill in so much of your other numbers, you don't have to do as much work for some of your more challenging multiples. That's why I love filling in multiplication charts this way because it takes out a lot of the hard work. There's so much that you know that you don't realize. So I've done my sixes. So now it's asking me to fill in my eights. Okay, so I can go ahead and I can create another line through my rectangle, okay, like this. And now I have eight points. So if I have eight here, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, okay? So you get the point, and I can count eight more. I only have to do eight more a couple times. So after 48, eight more from 48 is going to be 54. And then, um, oh, 456, I'm sorry. I make mistakes too. That's part of learning. It's part of getting better. So after 56, eight more from that is 64. Um, and then eight more after 88 would be 96. And then going down with my eights, I've done 48 after 48 is 56. I already have 64 filled out. And then I have 96. So see, very few facts I had to figure out for my eights. Okay, my next step is filling in seven times seven. Okay, so you've got one problem to do. If you don't know seven times seven, you take 42 because that's the number that, that's the multiple that comes right before and you just add seven to that. So 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49. So 49 is seven times seven. Look at that guys, we've got so much of it filled out. So we've got these few at the bottom right here. So these are our 12s and then we've got 11 times 11. So we can use some addition strategies to help us so I can take 72 and I can add 12 more, okay? So that's gonna end up with 84. And if I do it here, it's the same thing over here. And then after 96, if I'm adding um, 12 more to that, I'm gonna get 108, which is going to be the same over here. Um, then if I add 12 more to 120, I get 132, which is the same thing right here. So then I'm left with 11 times 11 and 12 times 12. Well, 12 times 12, so many of us tend to have memorized because it's just a fun fact to memorize. So I have 144. I'm left here with um, 11 times 11. So you can take 110 and you can add 11 to it. Or I like to think 11 times 11, it equals 121. So I kind of take those two 11s and that makes the two in the middle. So 121. All right, guys, so those are the strategies that I use to help me create my multiplication chart, okay? So in just about 10 to 15 minutes, you can create your own from scratch using your skip counting strategies, your counting on strategies, um, some, some simple tricks and tips that you might know about some of your facts to help you fill out your multiplication chart. And it won't be so challenging because so many patterns exist in this chart. And if you fill in some of the ones, it can take out some of the work for the more challenging facts. All right, guys, thanks so much for listening and happy practicing. Bye.